All right, video and audio sync. Boom, all right. And today we're gonna to be talking about sync points in Unity's Entity Component System. So today we're gonna to be going over what exactly are sync points, how they can be detrimental to your project, and how to avoid them in a few different ways. So for starters, let's go over the definition of what exactly is a sync point or a synchronization point. Basically, it's a point in the execution of a code that has to wait for all jobs to complete. Now, this is kind of a bad thing because basically, you know, we have some number of worker threads available to us, depending on how many uh, cores and threads that our CPU has. And if we encounter a synchronization point within our game, basically, you know, any jobs that we have spread across all those worker threads, we basically have to tell those to, you know, all complete and then wait for those to complete once they are finally completed then we can run the work that's done in the synchronization point and then we can go continue back to you know scheduling jobs across all these available worker threads that we have to us so the sync points as you can imagine they want we want to avoid them at all costs and basically minimize the amount of sync points that we have now sync points are going to be inevitable because sync points come up when we do structural changes and you know structural changes are really important to what we're doing in uh, unity's ecs or really just game development in general basically a structural change occurs when we're changing the entities inside of an archetype or a chunk and this basically happens when we say add or remove a component from an entity or changing the value of a shared component of a particular entity you know basically anything that's going to cause an entity to move from one archetype into another and it's also going to happen anytime that we create or destroy entities and this happens because structural changes can only be performed on the main thread and i should also point out that running any entities dot for each jobs on the main thread creates a partial sync point as it forces completion of any jobs that that job depends on. So sync points are going to happen no matter what. That's something that we can't avoid. Um, in fact, there are actually a number of sync points already built into the player loop that happen every single frame. I've talked about this before, I think in the entity command buffers video, basically the frame is broken up into three different sections. There's the initialization system, there's the simulation system, and then finally the presentation system. At the beginning and end of these, there's basically going to be a sync point where if we have any entity command buffers from any of those groups we can actually play back all those changes so that's kind of a hint about what we're going to be using to fix the problem of sync points okay so to give you a little bit more of a practical example about what's going on i basically have this scene here where we have all these cubes that are essentially going up and down and rotating around now this is happening in two separate jobs. So the first one we have is the move cube system. This basically just moves the cubes up and down on a sine wave. And then down below, I also have the rotate cube system. Now you'll notice that I did something a little bit sneaky. I created another system here that's the make sync point system. So this is intentionally going to be making a sync point after the move system but before the rotate cube system here so basically on the very first cube when i spawn it i spawn it with this first cube tag and then basically every single frame i'm going to look at that entity you know see if it has this sync point tag component if it doesn't i'm going to add it if it does i'm going to remove it so basically every single frame i'm just either adding or removing this component so basically that's going to incur a sync point intentionally every single frame in between the move job as well as the rotate job. So how does that actually look? Let's go ahead and open the profiler just by doing control seven here. And then we'll pause and just navigate to a random frame here. And we'll zoom in and take a peek at what is going on. All right, so you'll see here, we have to kind of look through a lot of threads because I have a lot of threads on my CPU, what's up? Um, so basically you'll see there's these two different jobs right here that are actually running one after the other. So there's this one here, which is our move cube job. So this is taking up a little bit of time right here. And then this is our rotate cube job and it's taking up a little bit of time right here. Uh, you'll see that even though these are running on two different worker threads, they're basically running sequentially. So this one happens and there's kind of like a gap where, you know, basically, you know, none of these other open worker threads are doing anything. And then we have this one running right here. Now it's not immediately obvious that there is a sync point. And so that's kind of uh, how it gets into a little bit of the difficulty of kind of debugging things here. Um, but if we actually kind of like look up towards the top here, 
you'll see that the uh, default world system sync points make sync point system, which basically forced a sync point. You see under that, we have this complete all jobs. So that's forcing all jobs to completion. And then so you see the end of this is kind of like right here, right before this line. So we can kind of scroll down and we see that this job is basically being forced to completion. And then once that's been completed, basically just kind of in this last little kind of like fraction here um, of that system, that's where we actually are doing our structural changes. Now, once those structural changes have been made, then basically after this, then now we're free to actually run the rotate job. So hopefully that makes sense there. But basically the uh, movement system job is running. It's being forced to completion because of that sync point. And then once that sync point um, basically is finished, we can go back to you know scheduling a job on a different thread here. And then after that, Unity can continue on with the next things that it has to process. And so just to kind of like look at some things right now, we're right now hanging around around uh, 35 frames per second, looking at just under 30 milliseconds per frame here. All right, so let's go ahead and eliminate this sync point. So back in the make sync point system i basically just added in an entity command buffer again go check out the video that i did on that if you want to learn a little bit more about that but instead of making this an entity manager dot remove component we're going to do an entity command buffer dot remove component and the reason the entity command buffer eliminates the sync point is because all the structural changes are queued up and played back later during a pre-existing sync point so literally just that change alone is going to eliminate our sync point so we can go ahead and hit play and now immediately we see that our frames per second is already up. We're kind of like just below 45 frames per second and our frame time is down to, um, you know, just over 20 milliseconds. So just that one change alone of that one sync point of either adding or removing a component is literally giving us 10 extra frames per second. All right, so we can open up the profiler and we'll zoom in on one of these frames here and we can see kind of what's going on here. So things are starting to look a little bit different now. So we see that we now have the move cube system here. And then if we go directly below that, you'll see that the rotate cube system is actually running in parallel on a different thread right now. Um, that's because this sync point is no longer basically interjecting itself in between those two systems running. So what that means is we get that nice little efficiency gain of being able to run these systems on different threads at the same time. Again, we can run these on different threads because they don't depend on any of the same data here. Now, however, I should point out that, you know, maybe we're not gonna be able to use entity command buffers in every single type of situation. And, you know, maybe a sync point is completely unavoidable. In that case, the best thing to do is just to basically batch together as many of these sync points as we can. You know, maybe we can kind of piggyback off the existing sync points in a frame, um, whether we can run our system, you know, at the very beginning or end of a particular update group, because if there are sync points that are next to each other, it's basically only going to incur one sync point and it's not going to, um, you know, incur multiple ones across the frame. But again, I do hope that today's video gave you kind of a good idea about how sync points work and how to avoid using them. Um, I know it can be kind of tricky sometimes because you may not always know which jobs can run in parallel or not, but um, really just start to be you know, conscientious about you know, as you're writing code in Unity ECS, what things are incurring sync points and start to think about you know, which, what can you do to avoid them? Do you need to run the system at a different point in the frame or can you just use an entity command buffer and schedule that work to happen at one of the pre-existing sync points? So anyways, with that being said, that's going to wrap up today's video. Do hope you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and the Data Oriented Technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.